The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too familiar. Gentlemen, welcome to a very special, very personal episode of My Brother, My Brother, and Me. We have an announcement to make uh, to begin this uh, episode, and um, gosh, guys, I don't really know how to... Well, it, it, I mean, we, we've consulted a lot of our family and friends, and a lot of people we really respect, and I think it's time that we just, you know, it's 20 dirt, it's time we come clean. It's 20, mm-hmm. That's so true, Travis. It's 20 dirt. It's time to dig it up. Come clean. We have been doping. There it is. Beginning in June of 1998. <laughs> mm-hmm. Basically over a decade before we would begin the show in preparation to record this program, mm-hmm. we have been injecting bull semen. Into mm-hmm. our buttocks. Nature's and... funniest animal. <laughs> the and bowl. nature's funniest liquid. Mm-hmm. Uh, directly into us. Mm-hmm. Um, every day, every hour, for the past 15 years. I am mm-hmm. fucking chock full of bull semen. And like, it, uh, it's, I sweat the stuff, and it's... Right. Do you know how the human body is like 75% water? Mm-hmm. At this point, Griffin is like 72% bull semen. Right. right. Um, it's why I can't really run. I ambulate slowly. Right. But it's because I'm very viscous inside. Um, and he he basically can't go to a dairy farm. Oh, they my will, God. L- he basically, if he walks, runs through with hands outstretched, he can impregnate 10 to 15 cows a second. Yeah, they get it's amazing. They they will try to get on top of this, and now, I'm flattered. Now, now, a lot of people ask how you get into this sort of. There is a an, a, an underworld, I guess, and I'm mm-hmm. I'm I'm worried about outing people. Mm-hmm. But I guess so, well, I let's guess, use let's I mean, use code names then. We'll say Schmorden Schmoris. Mm-hmm. Okay, Schmorden Schmoris got us into it, and. Uh, he was one of the first that that really turned us on to it, and Dan Kennison, basically Sam Kennison, <laughs> the, the, de- but he's dead, so like, fuck yeah, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's that other angry guy? Shouty, kind of shouty. Fucking everybody likes him because he said a bunch of Raymond ba- things about him. Ray Romano, <laughs> Bill, you know, comedy Bill, Bill Cosby. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so Bill Cosby. I'm uh, so full of the bull semen to put it in a jello pudding pop. That's how we started. We didn't. We couldn't take the injections. Bill we William Cosby was my comedy coach in high school. Sure. Mm-hmm. And we were trying to make state for comedy. Comedy state. And he says, uh, "You know it, that show, The State. <laughs> that's what. That's what it's about." He says, mm-hmm. "You look." He did it, but in a Bill Cosby voice. How would that sound? Um, Griffin, you got to get a leg up on the comedy competition ball. <laughs> and so that's he when melting I, at the end of it. That's when I started. Well, he was so so just jam ram jammed with cum, and like, <laughs> um, so like that's how I got started was pressure from from Coach Cosby. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, listen, guys. Let's put this w- no, note. We will continue to inject ourselves with bullshit. Can semen. you guys believe that they didn't induct anybody to the Comedy Hall of Fame this year? Yeah, yeah. Just because th- of all the jizzing. We've been. Re- you got to retire from comedy for five years, and I can't think of anybody. 
Well, and the problem well, is, is like even after that, when you break comedy records, they're still going to put an asterisk next to your name. Right. right. But not only that, but there are so many great comedy champs out there that don't jizz, like Bobcat mm-hmm. Goldthwait. <laughs> He's never oh, yeah. jizzed. He was a staunch anti-jizzer. Right. You could make the argument that, that Jerry Seinfeld retired from comedy decades ago right and mm-hmm. uh and he's still out there mm-hmm. never jizzed never you can't gi- never no way jizzed. has he never jizzed julia louise drivers was telling me that she tried to get him to yeah and he just shut her down and then canceled the show he was like i'm sick of the pressure and he canceled it so, but we're not canceling this show we're gonna no. move right on let's uh let's get our first question up in the mix this one comes to us from uh, uh i would i would also point out we, ne- we never actually introduce ourselves but i mean oh. at this point people come on i'm justin um, i'm 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 travis i almost said griffin <laughs> do you want to switch i've been fucked up do you want to switch good, for the show good app yeah i'm griffin okay fuck it i'm travis somebody hand me I'm... an everything bagel with a ham with a ham hock on it <laughs> i'm greg okay the footballer? Uh, the football? Who loves touchdowns. Yeah. I love TDs. Guys, I feel like shit. What's wrong? I drank too much alcohol. What happened? I did, uh, we did, did these shots that I learned from Epic Mealtime called the Gordon Bombay, where you take a <laughs> shot of Bombay gin and then have everyone call you Gordon for the rest of the night. <laughs> Fuck uh, those guys so, are funny. They are uh, jizzing. Funny. They are jizzing to the fucking okay, max. Yeah. And like, I am worried about where like their health is. I hope that they come. Maybe they'll come to Max FunCon someday and just like eat. But that would be bad because it's in an isolated environment. Mm-hmm. Uh, It'd become like a it, like a it, Donner party kind of thing. Yeah, right. They'll eat all the food and then they just <laughs> like mealtime cannibalism. People. Yeah, it'll turn into the Hunger Games. Um. Uh. I left my college town a couple years ago. The old gang is slowly starting to break up. One member of the gang is the one who got away, and I never confessed the fact that I've been crazy for him since we met several years ago. I've already moved away from our college town and only go back to visit. He'll be moving away within the year. Should I risk our remaining long-distance friendship to get it off my chest? I know 20 does was the year of getting it, but I'm not sure what to do in 20 Bakers does. Um, How could we be from Gmail any fucking clearer about what you're supposed to do in 20 dirt? 20 dirt. Dig it up. Dig this Dig shit up. up. This is dirt. This is dirty. This is dirty dirt. Get out the shovel, scoop it, and poop it. Get it I've, out there. You you. This relationship is a long distance relationship, which is to say it's not one. Right. Yeah. You might as well like the first uh, three quarters of of that question was just like it's dissolving, it's dissolving, it's dissolving, it's dissolving. What do I do? Oh, Fuck yeah. it. Fuck it. Check. Take a shot. Maybe he feels the same way. Is it too late to change the name of the year to twenty? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. It really, Rick, really, really is. Ricky is. It Ricky Ricky is DJ. Um, is it the year of DJ? Can I learn to DJ with my mouth? I I say I say just do it. Now there are two different ways to do it. Option A is you, you know the the confessing of your love and say hey I've always had you. <laughs> Option B is to say I hey say confetti. <laughs> <laughs> Option A confetti. I've always loved you. <laughs> <laughs> just rip Taylor and right in the face. <laughs> rip Taylor, come do some toupee humor. Uh, then option, she'll he'll get it. He'll get it. He'll know what's up. And then option B is to say, just a matter of fact, like, hey, Devin, by the way, I've always dug you. All right, nope, see you nope, later. Oh, side note, sorry, quick addendum, editor's editor's note, asterisk. Nobody's ever loved anyone named Devin. <laughs> Man, and anytime we goof on a day, there's always one guy who's like, ah, ah, that's me. I, I'm really worried that there's a Devin out there who's like, mm, you got me. <laughs> <laughs> I, one, I am alone. <laughs> that one is good. I am alone. That is a good one. <laughs> you guys got me. Um, <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, you know, it's it's lo- this this. I know this feeling. I know this feeling of like everyone starting to move away and a, and a friend group starting to, to bifurcate and perhaps even trifurcate. Uh, mm-hmm. But but that's a great time to shore up some of the ones that matter to you the most. And if this is uh, a, a guy that you care about, and, and then, I mean, why not? I'm always yeah. going to, we're always going to tell you to, 
to to go for it and, and stuff like this. I mean, friendships are nice, but especially long distance friendships, it's it's the perfect situation. You never have to see the guy. Right. You, right. If it doesn't work out, you're never gonna see this fucko. He's I mean, gone. I, I mean, honestly, the worst the worst that is probably no, the worst that could happen is like an asteroid falls from the sky. But like the worst that's probably going <sighs> to happen is if he doesn't reciprocate the feelings, it may be awkward for like a month or two. But, I mean, you guys have known each other for a while now, and it's long distance, so it's not like you have to awkwardly see each other that every is, day. That is not It'll how be it's fine gonna, again. That is not no. how that's going to go down. It's He's not going to say no. He's going to no, really? also see the plate tectonics shifting the two of you away from each other. This is, at any given point in your life, there are like 10 people who this is your last chance to fuck them. Right? Oh, you're painting a can't-hardly-wait situation. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about, little kid. <laughs> I'm saying that it, look around, look around you. Really look around you. This only works if you're like outside. But okay, look cause, around you. Because the only, th- only thing in this room is uh, my cat and my sensi. So okay. I well, got my pretend that this episode is... of 30 Rock and okay. my Have You Hugged Your Mug Today. <laughs> okay, well, you guys can make pretend to do this with these things. Okay. But I'm saying like you're on a bus. And you just got to the diversity stop, and there goes six people. Just got off the bus. You are never going to have another chance to fuck those six people again. Or that Cincy Candle, or that Have You Hugged the Mug Today mug. So they're like the six people. Maybe they'll be the six people you fuck in heaven. That's possible. (laughs) It's hard to say. But I'm assuming you ride the bus a lot and therefore come in contact with this situation thousands of times in your lifetime. So it's more like like the 650,000 people that you. I actually have a. Not a joke. uh, I I actually do think this way uh, on occasion. Not about sex, though, but about. Uh, like if I'm in a in a place I've never been before and I'm mm-hmm. go moving through it, you know, like uh, say an airport or something like that. As I'm passing those those people, it is almost certainly the only time I'm ever going to see it's, them. It so is intoxicating, right? It's basically, a- well, no, what? Because the way I think about it is that basically, as soon as I avert my eyes from those people, they're dead. Basically, mm-hmm. yeah. Like they're that's dead. actually how I operate in just everyday life. Just when I don't see my friends, they're dead. If whenever I'm not okay. talking to you guys, you're dead. So just, like, it's my world that only exists within a six foot circle around. So me. like when babies start to figure out like spatial understanding uh-huh that's just I have like, no object permanent you, you just skip that one we uh-huh. try to play peekaboo with travis and he just screams he just uh-huh. screams wildly where are you what the fuck just what the fuck? there was a man there was a man named clint <laughs> this sounds like a pretty good liam neeson movie <laughs> take, where did take, you go it's taken uh, three and he's playing peekaboo with his daughter return my daughter to me um well i mean I'm, I'm just behind I'm, this washcloth, I'm, I'm, Dad. Dad, I'm behind a washcloth. <laughs> I have a particular set of skills. I'm up. I'm upstairs. I'm. You hear the vacuum cleaner? I'm upstairs. Please fix your object permanence. I have a particular set of skills. Object permanence is not one of them. <laughs> but I have learned all my shapes. <laughs> Let me draw you a circle. <laughs> Ten. I have ten fingers, ten toes. <laughs> this is like a Muppet Babies version of Taken. <laughs> Taken Babies. Oh, God. I make pee-pee in the potty. <laughs> Who's a big boy? You're about to find out. <laughs> if you don't return my daughter. Dad, I'm right here. Just turn, turn around. Head slightly to the side. You swear you wouldn't do this at my wedding. <laughs> I'll lift the veil. If, is that what you want? <laughs> I'll lift it. Fuck! You guys want Yahoo answer? Yeah, yeah. God, I hope Liam Neeson doesn't hear that bit. Of all the like shit talk, we talk about celebs. Yeah, you'll talk about anybody, but not Leo. Yeah. Uh, this one was sent in by surprise, surprise, Ira Ray. Thank you, Ira Ray. Are you Ira Ray? Who wants to know? I I like that Ira Ray has contributed enough now that he gets like some sting music. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ira. It's by Yahoo Answers user Ben who asks. Oh, this is a fucking rhyme. I made to send you this picture of Ben. This kid is soulful. Um, who asks, what a 20-year-old girl like a GPS with my voice recorded as a gift? <laughs> I kind of like her, but she has no idea. 
Would giving a GPS Garmin with my voice recorded for directions be a good gift? If not, any other suggestions? Well, if you don't do a GPS with your own voice in it, I don't know what other suggestions. What else is there? Right. Yeah. What other? Yeah. It's either that or Darth Vader. Uh, yeah, I have uh, something that sounds like my wife that always tells me how to drive. It's called my wife. <laughs> <laughs> Am I right, <laughs> fellas? <laughs> Everybody loves Justin. Um. Uh, I would. I would go so far as to say, first Ben, that doesn't exist. No, it does. Um, huh? Yeah, sure you can. Does. You can get a garment and then just record yourself saying every single direction that could ever happen. Yeah, sure. Oh my I don't god! Think that's you true. know what I would get? I would get. Uh, I wonder if Sandra Bullock would do it, but like shout. <laughs> so I, I always feel like I'm in speed. Speed, speed up! Speed up! up! It's like I'm in speed school up! zone, Sandy. <laughs> Chill I'm on it. Um, it depends entirely on what this kid's voice sounds like, doesn't it? Oh, if he's got like a smooth life. Billy D thing he's going like, on, like, uh, then yeah. Damn, girl, pump the brakes. You coming up to a stop sign? What you gonna want to do? You see that barn? Turn left at the barn. Like that's <laughs> that would be good. But if it's like, um, go straight for two hundred meters. <laughs> Next stop, my heart. Mm. <laughs> You're gonna go to the flower store, and I'm gonna buy you flowers. Todd, hey, Todd here. Turn left. <laughs> Can you imagine, as the voice of your car, what if you could get William Daniels? But wait <gasps> a minute, here's the th- here's the twist. He's not Kit. He's Mr. Feeney. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> imagine it, Mr. McElroy. Turn left. I kind of, I, I don't know. I'm kind of into this idea now. I, I, there's lots. Who would you? Who in your life? Who in your life would you? Would you most like to? To have uh, coming out of your speakers. To tell you Does it that. have to be like someone we know or like a celebrity? Someone living or dead, but only dead. William Daniels. <laughs> yeah, you kind of kind of blew it already. It's like the best yeah. possible one. So, oh, so we'll man. strike him because I don't think he's dead. Okay. You know, Don Adams would be good. Quit. I don't know who that is. Or do I mean Don Knotts? Fuck. Is, this, is that a good? That is a weird gift. It's a weird. It's a weird way to tell someone that you like them how Unless. do you do how do you do it do you like program- you slip it in subliminally that's what it so has it's to like be. turn left on love street mm-hmm. it's like what i don't see love street i meant kennedy boulevard well that would get fucking annoying because like this is a this is a woman on the go you know i feel like the whole present is fucking annoying i mean it's thoughtful if the if the woman doesn't have gps and she gets lost you know but what's less thoughtful is if you get it for for that purpose but then you instead of saying you just take out the word turn right and you replace it with, I love you, Susan. Will you be mine? Love, love, Todd. Like, I don't think there's ever been a nerdy person named Todd. I, I, that's think... true, Travis. I didn't think about that. Every Todd mm-hmm. has to be a, fo- a like some sort of sportsman. Let's go with Gilbert. Ugh, that's much, much, much better. Gil. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Sorry, Gilbert. Sorry, the sorry the Gilbert that listens to this show. We j- sincerely apologize. Listen, is it appropriate to chime in when someone's getting heavy praise for something? You did most of the work on, or are you supposed to catch the praise giver in private and then let them know the real deal, or are you supposed to just let it go? That's from feeling gypped in Japan. That's okay. I don't offensive. know why we need to Such get racist. a good question. That's offensive. That's an offensive name. But anyway, feeling travelered in Japan. I think they prefer travelers. Mm-hmm. Feeling Romanied. Feeling Romanied. Nomadic fortune tellers. Okay. That might well, be hold ra- on. That might be racist. To you. <laughs> hold on. I think we crossed we're- backwards. <laughs> Secret werewolf. <Feeling> curse slingered. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the problem: is it's it's like a lose 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 situation. It really really wicked is. That's why the dude is supposed to say like, "Hey, I that it wasn't just me. This is a this is not a one man team." Yeah, I think that's I think that's fourth option is you confront. The the praise given later and be like, hey, uh, what the fuck? Um, all you did was get the coffee, and I did sixteen hours of work. You got a douche. you got a logic trap, this guy. Like while everyone's praising him, be like, oh great, do it again right now in front of all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see it. Here, here are the twigs. Mm-hmm. Do it. What what possible thing could someone be praised for with twigs? Shitty birdhouse. Okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's called a nest, you dumbass. <laughs> build a nest again, bird. I did that. That bird didn't build that nest. I did. Check the nest. That's my saliva. Holding those twigs. Twigs. When I am a dad, the one I will tell my children everything the truth about everything but the one thing i will tell them that is not true is that i made every nest so if they see a nest <laughs> in a tree i made it their dear old dad was the guy well they ask the what you do for a living they're like well every day i take my briefcase full of twigs and, <laughs> and i go I out for eight hours a day and make nests the city pays me to do it mm -hmm. those uh those grackles really do look comfortable you're right daddy did that <laughs> daddy did that for those grackles you could call people who own birdhouses slum lords. <laughs> My dad's building Posers. organic housing. What so here's the about? issue with this. Option one, you interrupt and say, um, excuse me, uh, boss man. I did all the work. That's the you worst. You look shitty. That's the worst one. Don't do that. Unless. That in no way benefits you. Unless. Unless you do it in a <clears> fun <throat> way. Like when he's like, <laughs> I put this presentation together and everyone's clapping and you go, and I helped. <laughs> like like the shake and bake ads, like the old shake and bake advertisements, and then people will get a no. real kick out of it, and then the boss will turn to to Michaels and be like, "Michaels, is this true?" And he'd be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, Johnson's <laughs> Johnson's definitely helped. Your last name is Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> Your last name is pure, plural. <laughs> My father founded the Big Johnson's T-shirt company." <laughs> I'll be damned if I let it see and fall into the likes of you. Uh, listen, uh, the, the, these are all bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the only one, don't talk to the person in private because then, like, that looks really, really because bad. Because it, it looks so shady and, like, underhanded. But, like, hey, um, I didn't want to say anything earlier. Right. Ugh. But he didn't do all the work I did. The I I mean, I, I don't think it's a terrible idea to go to the to the – person and say like listen we both worked on this it would mean a lot to me if you but then he'd be like ooh 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 what about this you go to him and say hey i really appreciated all the thing and the nice things you said about the project we work really hard on it i didn't get a chance to earlier but i just wanted to say thank you i really appreciated the acknowledgement whoa that's, no that's like a crazy thing but i kind of that's really manipulative yeah, you act as though dude also called you out. And uh, then he's like, uh, could uh I, yeah, could congratulations, I, man. That's a pre I like that, Travis. I'm actually Thank into you. that. Could I do that for anything, though? Sorry? Like, if I go to, like, a, a, a live theater show and, like, everybody's clapping and be like, guys, thank you. Thank <laughs> <laughs> guys thank you so much for just acknowledging all of our hard work up there we get up there every day just trying to make you laugh trying to make you cry trying to make you clap you can always pretend to be the director mm -hmm. no one knows no one knows or the, or the writer who knows who wrote a play really well unless you're unless it's like a shakespeare show <laughs> at which point good luck mm -hmm. that was me I, every time i see shakespeare when everybody's clapping i, I shout like they shout like bravo i'm i'm shouting like author author because mm -hmm. i i hope one time he's like what shakespeare <laughs> you're shakespeare. saying yeah, you hope one time that one just out of once, out of let's want... say the 30 times you've seen a shakespeare show he <laughs> arrives he arrives just in time he he splits up through the floorboards very spooky goes to shakespeare and he's like, I, you did a good job with my play. Okay. And and the reason he comes is because you, Justin McElroy, have shakily supported his <laughs> art form maybe 20 I'm or 30 I'm so times. glad I was able to reach one special boy <laughs> in this room. <laughs> Only one person appreciated my play. And then Just what if later that night you're watching Along Came Polly on DVD at home and he pops out of the TV like, I did this one too. Like, I don't think you did, Billy. <laughs> this one's based on Othello. Is it? Is uh -huh. it real? You know, uh -huh. if you hung out with Shakespeare's ghost, he would try to claim everything is some permutation. Oh yes, the incredible Mister Limpet. It's very much like Hamlet. Think about it. <laughs> really, Shakespeare? It kind of seems. You know what is like mine is Oedipus Rex. Oh, hold on there, because you. <laughs> That one is definitely not you. But wouldn't it be great to be hanging out with him and like ten things I hate about you come on and he's like, "This was better." Uh, come on, <laughs> they got they it. improved it. They nailed it. I thought <laughs> I was gonna make a joke about 
I always get confused if that woman's name is Alyssa Olenek or Larissa Olenek. Can anyone uh, confirm? Larissa. It's <laughs> Larissa. <laughs> the one thing I know is that the secret world of Alex Mack was based on two gentlemen of Verona. <laughs> mm-hmm. Think oh, about it. Because the one gentleman can dissolve into a pool of water. Mm-hmm. I it's remember that. It's not water, Griffin. Sorry, it's... It's ectoplasm. <laughs> How about She's a, a ghost. How about a Yahoo? Can I keep talking about Shakespeare's ghost? I'm really into it. Do you think he <laughs> asks everyone if they has, have Boz Lerman's number so you can call him and tell him he's a dick? <laughs> <laughs> I did I did like Leonardo DiCaprio Who's in it, sitting? but everything else was just garbage. Leo, Leo was great. And that John Leguizamo, don't get me started. What a delightful Hispanic. <laughs> if, if, hold on. <laughs> hold on, Shakespeare. I like the movie about the Moor who teaches Keanu how to fight with Kung Fu. <laughs> Do you mean the Matrix? And did you just say the Moor? Could you not? It's Lawrence Fishburne Shakespeare. You know he would claim to make up m- most words, too. Anytime you used an impressive word, he would have to slip in there. You know, I I coined that in Hamlet 8. Ham- of Ken- Hamlet 8. <laughs> Hamlet the 8th. Hamlet 8. That was, it was never produced. I just finished the manuscript when I died. I can show you where I hid it if you want. Oh, no? Okay. It's just, no. a, it's just an empty castle for two and a half hours. <laughs> and the subtitle is a good day to Hamlet. I don't know. I don't think it was a good name. Uh, uh, okay, Griffin, now you can. <laughs> Thank you. I think I'm done talking about Shakespeare's ghost. Cool. I went to Stratford upon Avon. Uh, for our honeymoon, and uh, I got a big kick out of when we got back, pretending that there were more places named after Shakespeare's plays in the uh, in the restaurant areas than there were, because there was really no. I I wanted steak spears. Mm-hmm. There were no exist. tie-ins. What? No tie-ins. No tie-ins. No, no. Ugh. I w- you know <laughs> a subway would be great, but they call it as you like it. You can just. <laughs> Get the sandwich, <laughs> however you want. Okay, Griffin. Now I'm really done talking. I don't think I don't guys. think I can trust you anymore. I promise. All right. Um, this Yahoo answer was sent in by Ryan Lowen. Thank you, Ryan. It's by Yahoo Answers user Friendly Zombie who asks, "Is it legal to smoke weed in space? If an astronaut is out of any country, would NASA have mm-hmm. any legal recourse if he smoked a bowl in the space shuttle?" I think it's the kind of thing that they say not to do, but everybody does it. Oh, right. Yeah. I think the bigger problem is less the smoking than the fire. I think that (laughs) you do get into some issues. I think they'd probably be okay with the weed Mm. if it wasn't for the, you know, open Open flame flame in a thing made of explosions. I think is less than (laughs) ideal. That's actually what happened in Apollo 13. Dude sparked a bowl, and they had a problem. Man, that sounded Gary, so yeah. natural, Travis, when you just said sparked a bowl. <laughs> I can tell Thank you, Griffin. I've been practicing. You sounded uh, like ma- a real grade-A chief, chiefer. <laughs> um, you know, you could just you could make this easier on yourself. Don't go to space to spark a bowl. Mm. Uh, go, go to the South Pole. No country owns oh, the South true. Pole. Oh, that's true. That's a fact. If you... Just go to the South Pole and get, mm-hmm. like, fucking lit. Just build a big, like, build a Gesundheit Institute down there at the South Pole. And everybody can just, like, get high and Patch Adams can can fix people up and there's no lawyers mm-hmm. or cops. Or toes because they all fell off your fucking foot because you're on the <laughs> South <laughs> goddamn Pole. What do you treat at the Gesundheit Institute? You know what? A lot. A, a lot, lot of, of the, any Anything related to freezing to death. I have, like, probably the best at gangrene right now. Like, if you get gangrene, don't even trip, because I, I do have that under control. I have a better place. Okay. Your fucking attic, or anywhere, <laughs> anywhere. Nobody or has ever... Or some glow-in-the-dark stars, post them up on the ceiling, you're in space All now. of a sudden, you're in space. You don't need to fucking... Nobody has ever gotten busted for doing weed. Fact. Fact, because every time a cop catches someone kept doing weed, they're like, ah, kids, you do you, getting it. You guys having fun, being young, enjoying it, enjoying life. <laughs> Get out of here, you rascals. Get out of there. Enjoy that. Don't smoke it again. 
<laughs> but if you do, it's fine. We've had a lot of fun here today, but I do think we need to clarify that I don't think this question asker was desperate to find a place he could smoke pot, and space was his last refuge. <laughs> like, there's there are many other steps I think to before you you re, you like, like resort to space in a cave. smoking, mm-hmm. right? You could always um, smoke in a cave underneath a camel. Why? I mean, why not? It's easier to get to than space. It's just a place on the earth, is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm just okay. I'm just thinking of places. I could have said under a table, but that's not as fun. If the president of the United States of America sparked up a J, uh huh, in the Oval Office, and you know he does. Mm-hmm. Why do I know he does? What? Because he legalized he it. He legalized it. I don't. He didn't though. He's actually been I'm cracking down. I'm pretty sure he said he was going to legalize it. He, he put a big old check mark on that bill. I, yeah, he was like, approve, I, approvo. You, What's the opposite of a veto? Is it an approvo? It's an approvo. I it. But I think you may be um, confusing legalized marijuana with unmanned drone strikes again. <laughs> My bad. I think you got it twisted. A little Maybe bit. he gets oh, high okay. off unmanned drone strikes. Oh, that's the fucking stuff. Uh, what was that? A wedding? Awesome. Oh, Fuck. Man. <laughs> Shoot it into my veins and also into them. All of them. Fuck, that's Shoot them. Mm-hmm. Oh man, getting political. Getting Ooh, little edgy. Watch out! A little bit of fire. Edgy. Let's get paid. Fat sacks. Fat sacks are f- coming to us from Emily to Sam. Travis, just read it. Get it out there. This message is for my asynchronous twin, my brother Sam, for his 30th birthday. We both love MBMBAM, which always gives us something to talk about while we try to bond over our our 4,000 mile separation. Happy birthday, Sam. And then apparently, she would like us to do a goof about eye mutilation. Jesus. Jesus Christ. We can turn this heartwarming message into something that will make him, and then she trails off. Um, Cry? Sick. Hard? Sad? (laughs) I'm sad. I'm going to go with hard, because I think Sam's a total weird beard. Um, hey, weird Sam, I'm not going to goof about fucking... Ugh. If you want to get Fuck. your rocks off of eye mutilation, go watch Event Horizon, but get that out of here. Get that bad stuff out of here. Ugh. What's an asynchronous twin? I think it's just uh, people who are close. So it's like a brother. Come on. But I mean, but it's like, hey, listen, it's sick. Can we not do this on Sam's birthday, please? Okay, I'm sorry. I'm make sorry, a, Sam, you, Emily. I'm sorry. Can you not make a scene? So happy birthday, Sam. Um, so happy you lived. Who's this message? This next message is for Sarah Winters from uh, Abby Van Van Vandenberg, who's her sister. Van Vandenberg. It's Vandenberg. There's three vans and then her name. You have to yeah. really take a run off. <laughs> Abby to Van it. Van Vandenberg. Uh, my Baron Von Vandenberg. My sister, Sarah Von Kindersnut, in- introduced me to your show, and we are both big fans. I won't be with my sister for her B-Day this year, since we live in different cities. Please, Brothers McElroy, wish her in the creepiest, wispiest voices you can muster. A happy 33rd birthday for me. Happy 33rd birthday. Happy 33rd <laughs> Can you can you make yourself sound like the French baby ghost from your favorite YouTube video? Eat on me, Zingla. Show me the recipe. Is it my good? Is that a real baby? Slam dunk. Un. Let me get the stamp of approval. Unlistenable. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Wunderbar. <laughs> we finally nailed the exact right way to make a podcast no one enjoys listening to. Oh, man. We one, went the distance. I made it sonically sonically unpleasant and in French. One day, whenever we retire this podcast, that good come and get it day, um, we are just going to do an hour of that. And that's how you will know that we are done. Uh-huh. That is I how you will know. They want me listening. Anymore. That's how you will know that we have come to the end of the road. This final message is to John Baltisberger from Philip Prochaska, wishing John Baltisberger 
a happy birthday. Now, that is now, does all. Does that, that come from Philip Prochaska? That does come from Philip Prochaska wishing John a happy birthday. And also, he wants to tell him and announce in a very public manner that he is promoting him to treasurer of the hard to say last names club. <laughs> I knew I owe your friend Abby Vandenberg. Abby Vander <laughs> recommended you. Abby At- Van Van Vandenberg <laughs> said that we should. Uh, she, she she cried second to my nomination. Um, they do not say which birthday this is for Mr. Baltzenberger, but I am going to guess eighth. <laughs> so happy eighth birthday to John Baltzenberger from Philip from your forty five year old friend <laughs> Philip Prochaska. <laughs> And it looks here, there's uh, eight quotation marks around friend. So that is an upsetting, that is an upsetting mm-hmm. email. And a winky face. Like, we get it. The, the quotes, the quotes we, sold we got it, Phil. It. Okay. Uh, also, I do want to talk about ExtremeRestraints.com. ExtremeRestraints.com is your number one source for things you can put in holes in your body. If you want to put it in there, don't waste time with a Q-tip. That's child's play. Why don't just skip right to a ribbed anal douche? If you want something inside you, but that's you want, man's play. That's man's play. A ribbed in illusion is great because it'll put something in you and take more out. And it's also great because you can just say a bunch of syllables and it sounds like something like Justin has been doing. Yeah, right. Pleasurable uh, anal douche. It's designed out of latex and rubber. First off, make sure you get the pleasurable one. Oh, if please. you get the uncomfortable, sad one, there's you won't like, like that's it. There's extremerestraints.com. There's probably a, like a, uh-uh. a completely unpleasant ribbed anal douche. Uh, but this one looks great. It looks like modern art. You could put this on a shelf. Looks I like think. Modern I mean, Family. Looks it's like, like the Dyson bag. It looks like the, that baby from Modern Family. <laughs> that fat, you know that fat 12-year-old baby on it's Modern like Family? That. Manny. I love that show. Love that baby. <laughs> is there a coupon code that you can tell us about now, please? Middleist is the coupon code that's going to save you 20% on your purchases there. And listen, that's enough to go get yourself another anal douche. Because if you're anything like me, your friends see the anal douche and you send them home with it. You loan mm-hmm. them. You forget who you loaned them to. And... uh and, and you just end up needing more. So go on and, and get a few. A lot of people hear the... Uh, I feel like... Dane Cook has taken the word douche and turned it into something. Oh, I thought you were going to say that people hear the phrase anal douche and they think of think Dane of Dane Cook. Cook. Well, I feel like I feel like people have take, co-opted the word douche or anal douche, although that's less popular, um, and turn it into like a bad thing. But I don't think that we should. I don't think we should do that for a pleasurable anal douche. What if What if we rebrand and we go with douche? Mm. It sounds it sounds international, which I do like. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. it probably is international in origin. Sure. I I think that prob- there is probably some sort of European country that discovered that there was a lot of detritus up there. Yeah, but since it's a tool for cleanliness, we can assume it wasn't France. <laughs> Jerry Lewis. <laughs> He's popular there. You had a public. Did you guys know there's like a pub? There was kind of a a public. Um, it was a big deal that he got kicked out of the the whole Jerry's Kids MDA thing. It's like a. It was like a a very public uh, ousting of the Jarrister. So long story short, visit extremerestraints.com and use the coupon <laughs> code Midlands and ponder hey. ponder a man's life achievements squandered. Squandered. <laughs> Reduced to ash. Only do charity if they're going to appreciate it. That's all I'm saying. I've been with my girlfriend for a little over two years, and I want to ask her to marry me. My only problem is that her sister, five years older, if that matters, got engaged recently, and her wedding will be this summer. (laughs) Getting engaged was kind of a big deal for her, and I'd feel a little guilty distracting from her wedding with excitement of another engagement. Should I wait till after mm-hmm. the wedding to propose or just not worry and go for it before? Yikes. And that's from mm-hmm. Griffin Mackerel. <laughs> <laughs> uh-huh. Weird. I don't know why he'd write in. Weird. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Listen. Uh, listen. Got it. It's actually from Prudent, Pros- Prudent Proposer. Good work, Prudent Proposer. Follow your heart. You know? 
You can't uh-huh. let the so you, you can't let like the yoke of your or? yoke of your big brother draw you down into mm-hmm. the muck of mediocrity vis-a-vis marriage. Well, it just once again confirms that everything in life is a competition. Mm-hmm. And you just have to accept that the the older sister's wedding will probably be better and everyone will like it better Bull and like them, them better stuff. Hmm? Let's go let's go down the line of the shit that we're going to have at our weddings and do this competition stuff. Sorry guys, I don't know why this is about you. I think it's about Oh, no, no. Let's talk about things that you could hypothetically have at your wedding that would make it better than, your than the younger siblings. Okay. Okay. Hypothetically. Hypothetically speaking. Chocolate fountain, I had that. Okay. So, no, that's that's old school. Yeah. I, I want the new school shit. Okay, but I had it, so you got it. If you're going to beat me, you got to have two chocolate fountains or have one that shoots something better than chocolate. And, yes, I am talking about bull semen. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, petting, uh, petting zoo. Okay, uh, I'm going to have mine professionally lighting designed and sound designed. Ah, fuck. I had this idea of what if you, at the wedding, also serve dinner to your guests. <laughs> nice. So I'm they actually going to steal that, but make it a picnic. They Fuck. That's way better. I know. Um, I, oh, I like, I like really love my fiance. Mm-hmm. So she's going to be there? So she'll be there. <laughs> So like that's but like our I guess our love is like the big, like one of the big. Oh, see, like, <laughs> it's a big see, my fiance here. and I were gonna do separate ceremonies, do the groom ceremony and the bride ceremony mm. in different rooms. I kind of like that, and you can get on <laughs> Skype, you can Skype mm-hmm. each other. I just said I do. Like we're 15 minutes behind. I my dress is yeah, big. There's, there's a lot. It's a satellite relay thing from one room to the other. Um, so it slows down. I just can't wait for you guys to check out sex. <laughs> <laughs> I hear it's so great. You gotta lose your mind. We've it been doing wild. these extreme restraints. I feel so uh, lot. Things are wild now, and I am just geared up, full of bull semen. I heard a, on Yahoo Answers that it's like when you put on a pair of jeans just out of the dryer, mm-hmm. and they're still warm, and the zipper is like really hot. <laughs> is it like? Yeah. Can is it like that? Yeah, it's just like that. Griff, you got another Yahoo? I feel like I could use it. I use a Yahoo. I can do that. Yeah, I showed this one was sent in by Nick K. It was or Key. Uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Patrick Reed fifty who asks, "How do I get diapers without my parents finding out?" <laughs> oh, good. Oh, diapers. <sighs> it's been a recur, a kind of a fun, fun I, theme lately. Diapers. Just said, somebody said a Google News alert on Yahoo Answers for the word diapers, and just then send me that hyperlink, that RSS feed. Uh, I am 16, and mm. I am what you would consider an adult teen baby. Yes. Okay. I nobody would consider anyone to be that because it's just three different words. <laughs> just three completely three different, different separate words. I wouldn't call anyone an adult teen, uh-huh. let alone. An adult adding teen. an extra I mean, flavor in there. I'm an ad- adding my Neapolitan ice cream flavor of adult teen <laughs> I'm baby. I'm an adult teen baby grandpa. <laughs> Here's the thing. I have the baby, uh, the body of a teen and the heart of a baby, and I fuck like a grown man. <laughs> so get over here, I, Deborah. I really, Deborah, I really need to get some diapers, but I don't know how to buy them without my parents finding out. Please help me so I can get my inner baby out. I okay. I'm trying to be cool, cause everything's fine as long as you're not hurting somebody. So if you want to be an adult teen baby, that's cool by me. But just go to the store, I guess, and look like uh, one of the people on Team Mom. Just sound like I'm trying to do but, right, but trying to do, do you... right by my baby mama. <laughs> okay, that's a great plan, Danny Ocean. But how do you get those fucking diapers back into the house? How do you get that? You've never have you ever bought diapers? They come in an enormous, almost novelty sized package. Have you ever seen Supermarket Sweep? They're trying to get the diapers into the cart. Right, you get like one package at most. The thing is, you gotta put all of them on at once. Why do you have to do that? <laughs> That's the best oh, way. Oh, sneak then, them into the house. And then put your, like, big, put your, like, uh, big dog sweatpants on. Mm-hmm. And your starter jacket. And your starter, and your starter jacket. jacket. <laughs> Cover that. Fluffy? I don't think so. I, mm. Oh, you know what you should do? Say your extreme couponing. And that you got these, oh. you got, you bought three, you buy, the, first of all, once you pull this heist, then you never have to do it again because you bring home 360 different diapers 
Now they yeah, are going to be deal. they are going to be adult teen baby diapers. So you may have to explain your way around that. You could just oh, say you're oh, planning God. on having a big baby someday, and that you got these diapers for like four dollars. Why don't I'm you bring him? Horrified. Them? I have to ask this, and I'm horrified to do so. Do they use the diapers? Of course they do. Why wouldn't they use the? If it's an adult teen baby, do you think they just fucking look at them? Hey guys, I got no. A... I thought they put them on, but do they? They use they shit in them. Oh, I have a spoiler alert for you. I'm not an adult teen baby, and if I was wearing a diaper and I had to use the bathroom, I would not be standing up right now. I would not be. Moving away from the microphone, I would just pee and poop in the diaper because I already had it on. I don't know why I'd put it on. I'm continent. But if I was wearing one, would you got Okay. No. Would you guys? Oh, let me. Hey, no. hey how about no. no? Let me ask you this. Okay. Would you? No. Hey, listen. I got one other question. Uh-huh. Would you? <laughs> you want to say quoi? in my baby? Um... Oh, man. You know what? The only time I could ever see myself doing it. I shouldn't be saying this. The Tonys. You don't want to miss a second. <laughs> no, but oh. like. Um, what if Mandy Patinkin comes on stage? How about you're at Times Square New Year's Eve? People actually do that. Do you, do you know that? When you look at the Times Square what? New Year's Eve, when you look at Dick Clark's Rock and New Year's Eve, and you look out in that crowd, and then you think about somebody in that heat that has to do it. That has to they let, are just let, doing it? That has to let go. They have a diaper on, and they're doing it. Somebody told me that. I was at a party. They were like, yeah, we were there. We were in full diaper. We were in no. full diaper. We were in full diaper regalia letting it go. You know, you're a teen. Just buy a bunch of diapers and then tell your parents that you're lazy. I don't know, Mom and Dad. I want to play EverQuest all I the time. I feel like I can focus on two things, and it's either homework or shitting. Yeah. Which one do you want me to do? Mm-hmm. Listen, listen, you want me to hit the books? You want me to hit the body? I can do one or two. Make your choice, moms. Hey, moms, throw this diaper away for me. Thanks. It's up to you. <laughs> had a traveler in the car. Had to uh, had to have one for the ride home. <laughs> Mom. I decided uh, to use cloth. If you could sign us up for like a service or something, that'd this be is great. Put this in the diaper genie. Mom, buy us a diaper genie. We don't <gasps> have one. What is a diaper genie? A diaper genie is a is a hole that you put diapers into, and then it, it compresses them, basically, oh, to make you. less room for diapers. Don't think about it. Oh man, I can't. <laughs> Listen, I'm don't seriously. Think about it. I'm gonna fucking throw up. <laughs> Can we move on, please? Can I yeah. ask that? Yes. I need some. Advice. I want to know why this 16 year old is infatuated. You were a baby last year. <laughs> why are you yeah. so tied up in this? Right. Are I you get it. Me that you want to be young again. Hi. Welcome to every day of your goddamn yeah, life guess for the what? rest of it. You are going to feel like that for the next, God willing, and the creek don't rise, like 80 years. Fucking don't get started on it. There's going to be plenty. There will be plenty of time to sow your creepy seeds. Don't get started when you're 16. <laughs> when, when you have your own house, you can fill with diapers. Hey, maybe it's a good sign if you're like, well, I can't sneak this past my parents. Then don't fucking do it till you can. Yeah. yeah, just wait till you're in the privacy of your own. Listen, I get it, adult teen babies. You're having the you're having the realization that things were better when you were a kid and people took care of you. Like, yeah, we all feel that way. You're not weird. You're just weak. Be stronger. Mm-hmm. Resist those impulses. I have an impulse every day to put on a diaper. But let me tell you, let me let me just give you this Most reminder. Days I have, I mean, I'm strong. Let me give you this reminder, adult team baby, because you don't remember this from when you were a baby. But having your own poopy on your butt sucks. <laughs> Mm-hmm. That's a trade off with adulthood. It's sort of like uh, Benjamin Button is that when you poopy in your diaper, it's gonna be on your butt, and you're gonna hate it. it and, and let me also say this: as as a person, a lot of my friends are having kids, and I'm kind of surrounded by babies and kids now. Babies are awesome, and people like to take care of them and 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 baby them until they don't anymore. Until the kid starts screaming. Until it becomes a thing. It's not that awesome to be a baby. Hey, listen, I need some advice. I work long, hard days, and when I get home, I just need some time to myself. I'm married and have one son, and as much as I absolutely love them, I just need me some me time. The only way I can get away is in the shower. Here's my question. How can I spice up shower time? Once in a while, I have a shower beer. Oh, no. Nice. Are there other ways to treat myself? That shower guy from the Southern Gulf Islands, and he sounds Awesome. He sounds like the What cool. about a full on shower wet bar? I feel like I should be asking him for advice. Yeah. Why stop at a shower beer? 
Have yourself a shower Manhattan. Okay. That's so, nice. That's good because the actual recipe for the Manhattan is, <laughs> I believe, uh, a tablespoon of bitters and then uh, sweet vermouth and then two and a half cups of lukewarm shower water. <laughs> Delicious. And then you just drink that I mean, right up. There is a cocktail you could make with shower water. I mean, by definition, anything's a cocktail if you're drunk after. Uh-huh. But you you could make a co- come up with a cocktail that uses shower water. And that's like the height of luxury. I mean, it mixes it right. You know, you put it on like a hard spray and mix your cocktail. That's right what you call glass. the drink, the hard spray. The hard spray. I love it. You could uh, put it on the a massaging shower head on there and that's hours of fun what do you mean uh, you can put it on your butt and it feels real clean after because you spray your butt out when did this when did this happen it happens <laughs> it happens i don't remember it, it happening i did you like the shower at my house uh i did yeah yeah oh no <laughs> oh yes <laughs> i'm an adult team dirty boy <laughs> and that's what four y's at the end by the way Oh, man. Yeah, I mean, have you considered just like le- leaving your house for a bit? Turn you know, off. Or- oh my god! <laughs> turn off turn the shower. Turn on the shower. Turn on the window. Rope ladder. Your <laughs> fucking. You, so your sad. dad has been in the bathroom for four hours. I'm think. I think dad has OCD. String <laughs> up. When you you climb back in, you come out of the bathroom, and your wife's like, "Honey, how was your shower? And why do you have a ticket stub for the Hobbit?" <laughs> I need you to do this. Okay. So, uh, question asker. Load up. You're an inflatable clown. Load right? up balloon 2. Fuck. God damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs> Fuck. Couldn't let me have it, huh? Couldn't let me have it. One thing. Couldn't let me have it. <laughs> you just swooped in and poached that right away, didn't you? <laughs> Nom. Chop. <laughs> Bye. That's the sound of you seagull and Griffin's joke. <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> Listen, I'll tell the boss it was both of us. Okay. So you don't have to <laughs> Great, thanks. Worry about Thank it. You. Listen, uh, Jesse, when Griffin, uh, when Justin made that joke, it, it was Griffin's Griffin. Griffin, you have been um, down on your goof quota this month. Well, let me explain. <laughs> yes, sir. Let me explain. You said nothing to indicate that they would be the inflatable clown. I was just trying to prove to you how deep our connection goes, how strong our bond is. Okay, cool. Well. I'm gonna rob your house, and then, but it's because we're so deeply connected. Just leave my shower head. It's the only thing I sure. like. Oh, you know anything that has been in that zone? <laughs> hey, listen. Thank you so much again for tuning in to our 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 show. I'm really sorry about poaching Griffin's joke earlier. No, you're not. I'm. I am sorry. I'm sorry. Um, and but I'm not sorry that people are tweeting about our show. Like. Jan Villarosa, Love Actuary, uh, Roger, Steve Simmons, Lizzie Cross, Mr. Paw 64, Ambi Woe, Craig Wilson, Left Walker, Ragged Ann, uh, everybody, Zangera, thank you so much to everyone who tweets with the MBMBAM hashtag. If you want to get somebody started with our show, there's no better place than our sampler, bit.ly forward slash it's Mabimbam. We desperately, desperately need to update that. Can we say this week, get on the MaxFun forums, and if you have, like, a bit, preferably, like, a pretty concise one that we could throw into a compilation that you like from any point in the show, then uh, get on the forums and let us know. Because right now the sampler only covers, like, the first, like, 40 episodes or so, and that was not Mm -hmm. our primo shit. Uh, and while you're on MaximumFun.org, make sure to check out all the other wonderful Max Fun shows. Uh, throwing Shade, congratulations. What did they do? Uh, they won for Best LGBT uh, Podcast. Why didn't we win that? Because we were mostly mean. Not to, to everybody, though. It's equal. But congratulations to them. So make sure you check them out. Check out Jordan, Jesse Go, Bullseye, Judge John Hodgman, uh, Risk, uh, Memory Palace, all the other ones. Um, did we win any? Not to my uh, knowledge. We won for Best Spirituality Podcast. Good, good, good. Uh, I want to thank John mm-hmm. Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song, It's a Departure, off the album Putting the Days to Bed, which sandwiches our show. Like two delish, delicious pieces you know, I just, of I just listened to that album again this week. God, it's so fucking good. Yeah. Hey, preach in the choir. Hey, listen, if you, wanna, uh, if you want to uh, check us out on Facebook, we have a social presence. Uh, if you if you go to Facebook and search for M B M B A M, 
there, there's a group there that you can like, and there's also, I think it's a different, actually different group, the one that is my brother, my brother, and me. Shouldn't splinter them. Should bring those yeah. two together. I don't know how that happened, yeah. but well, uh, you got to like rival groups. You got to Moses it. Uh, and and also, I want to tell you guys that um, while I was going to Facebook to check out uh, uh, how to how to get to our page, I did want to tell you that I discovered I'm friends with a woman who has only one like, and it is for Arby's. So, <laughs> sounds about right. And also, we haven't mentioned it in a while, but if you uh, would like to get like a, a personal message for somebody, or for yourself, I guess, or a message for your business, or something like that on the show, just go to MaximumFun.org forward slash Jumbotron, and you can get it all set up there. Yeah. Uh, this final Yahoo answer is sent in by Ira Ray. Thank you, Ira. It's by Yahoo Answers user Aaron, who asks... What are some good songs against Illuminati without cussing? <laughs> I'm Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad. School on the lips. <laughs>